Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today we're talking about single sign-on. Using the logins for sites like Google and Facebook to connect you to other sites on the internet. You see it on lots of different websites. Sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook, sign in with Apple, sign in with Microsoft, or even sign in with Twitter. And there's actually hundreds more too. Just about every website you go to these days wants you to sign in. It makes sense. If you are logged in, you can customize your content to see what you want to see. That means it needs to be personal for you, so it needs some way to recognize who you are. If you went to Facebook, but Facebook didn't know it was you, what would it show you? Everything that was public? That would be hundreds of thousands of posts per second. You'd never be able to keep up for a moment, and it would all mostly just be completely irrelevant to you. You want to know what your friends are up to, but that's about it. So everyone wants you to log in, but security best practice says that you shouldn't have the same login and password for every site because it's a security risk. There are options. You can choose a truly unique password for every website. Here's one LastPass gave me. Lowercase u, capital R, lowercase f, 8, capital B, 708, capital S, lowercase x, lowercase b, uppercase y. It's a great password. Am I going to remember it? Not a snowball's chance in hell. Of course, I can use LastPass to remember it for me and therefore have a unique password for every site. But that's just a little bit slow and complicated. A better idea is to take an account you already have with a trusted authority and use it to gain access to other sites. It works like this. I go to a website. The site asks me to sign up. I pick a trusted authority from their list. I'm then redirected to that trusted authority where I log in to an account that I already have with them. The trusted authority then sends me back to the original site with enough information to create my account, usually an email address, a first name and a last name, though sometimes more. Let's try a real world scenario. This is Tinkercad.com. Tinkercad is the Autodesk owned 3D drawing package that I use anytime I want to create something to be 3D printed. I can choose to log into Tinkercad with a standard email address and password. I have the option here to sign in with Google or sign in with Apple. Or if I click the arrow, I can also sign in with Microsoft or sign in with Facebook. I'm going to sign in with Google. This takes me to the Google login page. I'm no longer at Tinkercad.com. I sign in with my existing Google credentials and then because I haven't signed in before on this device I have to step through the two-factor authentication where it texts me a number that I have to then put in. Then it sends me back to Tinkercad where I have to accept the terms and conditions and in this case opt not to get the newsletter. Sorry Tinkercad, I already get it twice. After a few seconds it creates the account and I'm logged in. If I go to my profile I can see there that it has my email address and the first and last name connected to that Google account. Now every time I go to Tinkercad, I follow the exact same process, but with the sign in button. I click sign in and I choose Google. If I'm already logged into my Google account, it will take me straight to the Tinkercad page logged in. Simple and fast. If I'm not signed into my Google account, it will take me to the login box where I can sign in. If I'm signed into multiple Google accounts, which happens to me a bit, it will give me this pick list where I can choose which account I want to sign into Tinkercad with. Whichever way it does it, it's simple and painless. So why would I do this? Well, for me, my Google accounts are fairly central to all of my daily workflows. With this system, they're also now the hub of the logins for a whole bunch of other sites. It just keeps it all tied nicely together. When I change the password on my Google account, I'm effectively refreshing the security on all of those sites as well. But are there any risks I hear you ask? Well, of course, there's always risks. Security is always about the balance between risk and ease of use. It means if somebody gains access to my Google account, they will also get access to my Tinkercad account, my Evernote account, and dozens of other sites that I've used the Google login for. That's why two-factor authentication is so important. I've done a couple of episodes about two-factor authentication, which are linked up here, but I haven't done a specific one about Google's two-factor authentication. So I'll probably do that next week, and you can find it linked here. The reality for most people, though, is that their email is the hub of their identity anyway. 
Most sites, up until recently even some banks, would allow you to change the password on your account by clicking the forgot password box where it sends you an email and then you click on the link in the email to change the password. That means that anyone who has access to your email account can change the password for any other account and therefore they have most of the keys to the castle. At least, if you were using single sign-on, you only have to regain access to one account and change one password to be secure again. Make sure you keep that password unique and secure. I've used the Google account as the example here, but some people's lives revolve more around Facebook than they do a Google account. For them, it makes more sense to use the Facebook login. For others, it might be their Apple ID, Amazon ID, Microsoft or Twitter. It just depends where you put your trust. I do in fact use some of the other trusted providers if the Google one isn't available. It just depends on the site and what they make available. The Department of Education in Victoria, where I work, has recently migrated staff emails to an Office 365 account. This means that that account can be used as a trusted authority for a variety of sites inside and outside the department. We get access to an Adobe account, a Minecraft for Education account, and an educational video site called ClickView, all with that one EduPass sign-in. All we need is our at education.vic.gov.au email address and password. So that's single sign-on. Question of the day, do you use single sign-on? Or have you been ignoring it, but you think now might be a good time to start using it? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician learn about the problems, protect yourself from the bad guys, and repair it if it breaks. There's some older episodes you may not have seen before, here and here. And down here, there's a link to subscribe to the channel. You can then click the bell and you'll be notified about all the new episodes as they're released. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye.